Do you believe that most of the global analysts who have pared down our GDP growth to 5.15 are being over-pessimistic? You mean for the current year? That's right. I would say, yes, they are being over-pessimistic. Look, what would your you own view know, be? Let me, let me say, there is no hard and fast rule about uh, how do you make short-term forecasts. I think one reason that people have been paring down our growth rate is the fact that others are slipping also. Uh, BBC announced yesterday, I think, that President Rousseff in Brazil has lowered the Brazilian growth rate for the current year to 2%. So actually, unfortunately in India, people are not adequately aware of what's happening around the world. But Brazil is a BRIC country, one of the, one of the key BRIC countries. Which we are compared to. China's growth rate has been lowered. They're, they're, they're growing faster than us, but they're lower than what they were earlier. So actually the lowering of growth rates is more or less across the board phenomenon. And it's quite possible that they just lowered it to 5%, thinking that we may take too long. Uh, to correct these uh, domestic impediments to growth. I think we can do that domestically, and it won't take very long. Uh, if government is able to do what the Prime Minister has said we're going to do, the second half of the current year will see a change in investment. Uh, Taking us beyond 6%, according to you? Oh, for the current for the year? year yes. yes, I would say so. I would say Over so. 6%, you would still be hopeful? I would certainly say Provided so. we are able to keep this yeah. momentum but going. Remember, it's not too important to uh, get the exact growth rate no, for the current year. I, I'm not. And I think I'm not even asking. What we're looking at right now is the last quarter of the last year was 5.3, which was a bit of a, a, shocker. a shocker, if you like. The first quarter of the current year is 5.5. You can, if you like, start asserting that that's a turnaround, but I would not call that a, a really definitive turnaround. I think you'll get a definitive turnaround when, on a quarterly basis, you exceed 6%. Uh, we should certainly, during this year, expect to do that in either the third quarter or the fourth quarter. The important thing is that when we've done that turnaround, I don't see any reason why we can't go above 7% in the next quarter. Because I think India's growth is dominantly driven by domestic supply capability. And therefore, we should address the supply constraint, uh, fuel supply problems for the power sector, some of the difficulties in implementing road projects because of environmental clearance. Now, these are things that we can do. Hmm. I want to ask you a question, sir, which every global investor and a concern which they've been raising now for over a year, and which is inflation. And I want to tie this down with even what the RBI has been saying in terms of the fact that, look, we would love to start easing but concerns on the fisc and concerns on inflation are holding us back. What would your response be? No, I think that I can understand uh, the RBI uh, concern on this. Uh, clearly, prior to the diesel price hike, uh, there wasn't an adequate uh, perception of fiscal space beginning to be created. Uh, the diesel price hike does, in fact, move a step in that direction. And the disinvestment, too. Disinvestment was always was going to happen anyway. I guess people now think that, yes, it will happen. Yes, fine. I mean, so I think that, that sort of space is important. Basically, inflation has been coming down, but it's still above comfort level. Uh, so the RBI has to make a difficult call. Uh, are we doing enough on the supply side to think that the supply side constraints on inflation will be eased? Have we created enough space on the fiscal side to justify a relaxation, a sort of a signal on the monetary side. I think that on both those grounds, the, the directional answer is very clear, that we've been doing the right thing. Now it's for the RBI to decide whether that's enough. But do you believe the space has increased a bit more? Oh, for absolutely. It to start no question about that. So let me come to an area where you have been extremely... Uh, outspoken about, you've been working very hard on, and that is the whole infrastructure space. I know you've touched upon parts of it, but I'd just like to get your thoughts before I conclude this interview. Let's look at power, for example, sir, where you have been closely involved. The PMO has been closely involved. You've tried to bring this sector back out of a kind of a morass that it had really got into. You've tried to bring ministries together to sort out issues. But are you... Are you discomforted that the progress that could have been made hasn't been made? We've actually got mega projects, thousands of crores uh, sunk into them. 
we're really not getting them off the block as fast as we would have liked to. You did give a timeline of two months by when you hoped that a lot of these supply, coal-related issues would probably get resolved. But what's your own reading, sir? Well, no, the because I know you've I think, been very uh, active on this to try and... Well, it's not that, I mean, up. several of us have I know, been active. I meant including you, sir. And I'm part of the group yes, that's been yes. active. Uh, and I would say that uh, we have made progress. The first point I want to make is we have made progress. Uh, six months ago, the whole issue of whether Coal India is going to sign a fuel supply agreement uh, was not settled. It's now settled. Uh, the whole issue of whether, in the light of shortages on the domestic front, whether they would be doing imports, that's sort of settled, and they're trying to work out the details of that. So I think there, there is movement in those areas. You're talking about the pooling of coal. Bit. Yes, uh, we've been very much in yes. favor of that, and I think there's, you know, these things become a little difficult to handle, and part of the problem is that from a governance point of view, uh, Coal India has its own board, they could legitimately have a different view, you know, it's always a good idea to take a little bit of time to discuss these things. I think uh, in investors would be reassured if they felt that things are moving, and I think they do feel that things are moving. And my guess is that by the end of October, uh, the unresolved issues on fuel supply, as far as Coal India is concerned, will be satisfactorily resolved. We've got big issues on how do we ensure that the financial health of the DISCOMs uh, who are the ones who actually pay for the power, uh, is that being set right? I believe that there are proposals. Uh, my colleague B.K. Chaturvedi had made some recommendations. Those have been discussed interministerially. The Ministry of Power has prepared a cabinet note. I hope that that cabinet note will go to cabinet. And when that happens, we will have a mechanism where the debt of the distribution companies can be satisfactorily restructured, along with them taking on some obligations in order to improve the current uh, operating position of the discount. So that's clearly a gain. I think we need to go beyond that also and look at some of the sort of things that are holding up uh, clearances for coal mines, etc., both private captive coal mines and public sector coal mines. That's a little more difficult, but I think that's an issue that we have the Prime Minister himself referred to this morning, that, you know, we need to find satisfactory problem resolution mechanisms. You know, it may be that uh, we'll, we'll take a few months longer than we should have, but this is, this is one train that's moving. Hmm. What about ultra-mega power projects? Uh, they, in fact, want to pull out of it, most of the groups. I think the only problem that you're referring to is where the ultra-mega power projects have entered into a com offered competitive bids, uh, offered power rates based on competitive bidding, based on imported supplies right. of coal, which they own from their own mines. And I think what's happened is that in the countries where these mines were located, there's been change of law. I don't know how we're going to resolve that problem. I mean, you know, uh, they entered into a coal uh, uh, power purchase agreement, uh, which covers them for change in domestic law, but doesn't cover them for change in international law. Now, frankly, I hope that some sensible resolution is found of this problem. The central government doesn't directly have a stake in it because this is a, sure. a contractual agreement between these producers and state governments. So I think our role is to try to explain to state governments that maybe they need to look at this thing and find a fair way of apportioning the burden. Looking forward, I mean, I'm firmly of the view that power producers should not be taking fuel risks. I mean, power producers should make money on the efficiency with which they convert fuel into electricity. And the fuel risk should invariably be a pass-through to the consumer. Hmm. Uh, that's not what was done. So the problem is consumers quite legitimately say, well, why should we not insist on our pound of flesh? Difficult choice. Uh, hopefully they'll find some way of resolving it.